Hello, my name is Dan Richardson, and welcome to the Dan Richardson Show. So, I'm just um, gonna play Spider-Man PS4 on my uh, TV, and hopefully this works a little bit better than my projector. There shouldn't be as much background noise as there was, and if my dog gets up while I'm doing this again, that is the sound of metal. Just jiggling. Um, like with my Rise of Skywalker review, there are notes <coughs> that I'm going to be um, reading from and stuff, <coughs> and uh, this is already <coughs> a bit longer of a, um, <coughs> of a little int bit of an intro than last time, so here we go. Um, I'm going to review um, The Big Bang Theory and The Mandalorian <coughs> tonight, so let's do it. Um, first off, The Mandalorian. Um, I think The Mandalorian is a good show. Um, I think it is as good as, um, or I think it's as, yeah, it's as good as Clone Wars. It's also Clone Wars. It's nice to return to form, and, and uh, I do kind of think highly of... Um, of Rebels, but it is, and Rebels was a good little show, but I do think that it is, um, it was, but I do think that it, um, has some, is a bit more of, um, I think it is made a little bit, uh, better than Rebels and Hold Up. Um, but yeah, so Rebels is kind of, so I do think that, um, so it is kind of immediately better than, uh, Rebels. Oh, boop. Okay. But, yeah, so basically, um, the plot of the show is that, um, Basically, our, uh, the main character is, of course, the Mandalorian, and he basically has, um, uh, some, and, uh, you know, he kind of has to deal with the fact that, um, it's hard being a bounty hunter even after the um, New Republic's founding, thanks to the events of the original trilogy and stuff. Which is interesting that, you know, it's just not an automatic peace and prosperity. You know, like what, you know, we thought it might be. Um, it's actually a little bit, not worse, but it certainly has gotten better since the, because of the fact that there are still sort of remnants of the Empire still around, like there is on the planet that we first meet <coughs> the, uh, the, um, Mandalorian on, or at least where we meet Car, um, Car Weathers. <coughs> it's actually the first little snowy planet that we go to, um, the uh, driver that gets him to um, the, the crest, which is what his ship is called, um, is actually the guy who plays Bert in the Big Bang Theory. So that was kind of neat. Some crossover there. But I do um, still... And of course, Dave Filoni directed the, the first episode of the show rather well, and he even directs The Gunslinger, which um, I forget what episode number the gunslinger is but the gunslinger quite, was quite good as well and he actually plays um he actually um he actually plays the gunslinger um or he does good with playing or with um directing gunslinger and he even wrote that episode too so that's good 
Um, so, basically, uh, Baby Yoda is adorable. Um, I think that's, that's something that everybody basically agrees with, is that Baby Yoda is, like, really, probably the cutest, um, Star Wars character ever. Um, by the second episode, I, he did kind of feel my heart when he ate the, um, when he ate that frog hole and stuff, like, that was hilarious. Um, and, uh... Baby Yoda is actually quite, was actually quite, um, was, uh, he was pretty good, and I think he's a puppet for most of it, like, there might be some scenes where he's possibly not a puppet, but the show was given, like, three, like, it has, didn't have, like, um, one point many, uh, one point five million dollars each episode. Wasn't that like how much the show was? You know? So it was kind of interesting. Um, and of course it looks it. It's like, it's a really good looking show and stuff. And um, hopefully they maintain that quality, like hopefully Disney doesn't really cut their budget, but I don't think they will because the show is very popular and it's good. So, you know, there shouldn't be any budget cuts really um, to speak of. But yeah, so uh, Nick Nolte, his character is really good. Um, the Ugnaught that he plays um, and stuff and uh, you know, it was rather nice, and of course the lady from, like, uh, the first Deadpool, um, she, um, she plays, like, the resistance, or the, sorry, not resistance, the rebel, the rebellion, like, sort of shock trooper, or whatever it's called, um, she, she does a good job, too, and, uh, the guy who plays the Mandalorian does a really good job for some, for playing a character who is basically wearing a helmet for most of the show, and of course, um, uh, I guess I haven't really talked too much about my, my feelings on the, on Thor Ragnarok, but I'm a part of the, uh, the small group of people who don't really like Thor Ragnarok, like, I liked it in theaters, but it just kind of, um, you know, like, all modern comedies has sort of lost its um, it's, it lost its, like, humor, basically, after a few watchings, because you, because it just kind of goes for shock humor, like most comedies do nowadays, um, so, that's basically my, that's basically the conclusion of my thoughts on the, uh, Thor Ragnarok, so when I heard, or, so when I finally saw that that, um, that, uh, he, or that Taika Waititi was going to direct an episode, or one of the, no, the very last episode of this show, I was like, oh, okay, um, cool, I guess, and, uh, you know, I was a little worried about the quality of it, but, you know, they were able to kind of keep them, um, they were able to kind of keep them on a, on a very, on a very good leash of oh, darn it died um oh i lasted like almost 10 minutes about dying that's awesome but you know they were able to keep him on a pretty tight leash thankfully um in the beginning of the show and he was actually very tolerable as um i feel him um the lasers like i i really like that the lasers were just kind of zooming around on this um for the show like, it, it felt very much like Clone Wars, where, like, you know, there are all sorts of kind of crazy just laser, um, effects happening, just with, like, the lasers and stuff. Like, it was awesome. And I think that the, the, and I think that the show is kind of, um, and, you know, it was 
was really nice in that final laser battle, and I think, um, and I think the sin was really, really well done, and of course the sin is my favorite episode of the show. Um, uh, Deborah Cho, I believe, or channel, or Deborah Cho. Um, she's a good director. Um, I heard that she's gonna be um, show running that Obi Wan show, and um, hey, cool. Um, Obi Wan is my favorite Star Wars character, and I'm excited to see what she can do um, show running because hopefully, and hopefully she gets to like direct the episodes because you know um, because Favreau wrote like a, a majority of these episodes. That was kind of, he's like a really good, um, writer, you know, because he, you know, he did a great job directing Elf and, I, and, uh, Iron Man, and I think even Iron Man too, like, he was put under a lot of pressure, and Chef, I think, is literally just about, um, is literally just him thinking about Iron Man 2, like, I think Chef is about the, the making of Iron Man 2 or something, I feel. But yeah, he liked it really. But yeah, it's really good. And of course, the Jungle Book is a really good movie. And you know, the Lion King remake wasn't like, the best. Um, and certainly, if you're not a fan of Dan Glover, it's not gonna, or if you're not a fan of uh, Donald Glover, it's not gonna turn you around on. Um, you're better off just watching the comedy special Weirdo on Netflix. Um, if it doesn't help you like Donald Glover as a comedian, nothing will. Because, uh, you know, that's probably the funniest he's ever been, at least in my opinion. Uh, and, you know, that's not a hot take, that's just my, that's just me being honest. I'm not really a big Donald Glover fan. Um, except a few little things they've done. Um, but whatever. Uh, yeah, and my least favorite episode, surprisingly enough, is The Prisoner, which is the episode that, that, um, Christopher Lewis came up with a story with, and then he also wrote it, and he also has, like, a, a teleplay, but he wrote it, and he, he surprisingly did not do it good, so, like, and I think it's mainly that it's not really well directed, because every episode looks amazing, it's well it's well shot. You know, the cinematographer certainly deserve um, both of them because I think they're suitable. They deserve high praises from, you know. But, like, the director and a lot of the actors were just not good. Like, the lady who plays the Twi'lek, um, not, uh, she wasn't good. <coughs> uh, you know, but there's just a lot of like, growling and snarling and stuff, and I don't really like that. I would rather if they had, if they all had personalities besides, <coughs> besides, um, gurs and growls and stuff, because, you know, that's just poor. Maybe not, maybe not poor writing on their part, but like, that was just not the best writing that I that I've certainly seen from Christopher Yost because he, you know, he's written, you know, episodes for the, um, because he's written episodes for, um, Earth's Finest Heroes, you know, the Avengers cartoon from 2000, um, from 2012, or 2011, I mean, 2000, or was it 2010? No. And, of course, Wolverine the X-Men being, uh, one of the top three X-Men shows alongside, you know, X-Men Mary series, obviously, and x and evolution, you know, but, you know, and, you know, maybe he's just lost touch, although the, um, although the episodes that he wrote for, um, the 2012 Ninja Turtles show, so it was pretty good, so I don't know what happened there, but whatever, and of course that episode was also written by the director, co-written by the guy who directed it, and he did a good job with the child, um, the, Child is really the episode that helped me 
fall in love with the show because yeah, I really enjoyed that first episode. But I think it's a mixture of the child and the sin that really helped elevate the show to be more than just a continuation of um, Clone Wars and making it its own thing that stands on its own despite its connections to um, one of the greatest um, animated shows of all time. That being, you know, Star Wars The Clone Wars, because it truly is. At least in my opinion, it's one of the best animated, it's like in the top uh, 10 best animated shows of the past decade. Um, you know, uh, 2009 to 2019. I think that's how that works. But, you know, he's his own. Um, y'all can tell me your all favorite episode and stuff. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, uh, there's like an, there's a R2-D2 unit. Or like, there's an R2 unit with like arms and legs and stuff in the second, or in the final episode. And like that's really kind of cool. It was sort of neat to see one of those things like that and stuff. And uh, I think that's, oh, Dark Saber. Um, I almost forgot to talk about that. Okay, I'm gonna have to talk about this real quick. So basically, um, the, uh, the big sort of lights, the, like, the black lightsaber that, um, that, uh, Pre Vizsla uses in Clone Wars, and then Sabine from Rebels gets in, like, the third season of the show. Um, he's in this episode, or he's in this show, and he's used in, like, the last few moments of the show, um, you know, kind of being similar, but not entirely similar, but being similar, like, to the big, um, Darth Maul reveal at the end of Solo, and it, and, uh, I have my own theory about it, um, but this will assume that the end of Rebels is a little bit wrong, so, so hopefully y'all can bear with me. Um, I think the, um, I think that the ending of Rebels is possibly not true, and I think Sabine actually maybe possibly died, and then he got it from Sabine, or, you know, Sabine just lost the Darksaber arc, no, 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 actually, wasn't, that's just a teen. No, that, no, that's just a teen sister. Um, was the one who got the dark saber, right? At the end of, um, like, at the end of that episode in Rebels. No, so he killed her. Okay, there you go. Okay. So, yep, there you go. I figured it out. Okay, so I'm gonna give the Mandalorian a, a um, a very. Um, I'm gonna give it a four, or no, a three. I'll give it a three point five out of four. Um, I have some minor qualms with it, but nothing that can't be fixed in like um, future seasons, and I'm gonna die. But nothing, oh, no, no. but nothing that can't be fixed in like future in uh, future seasons. So yep, there you go. Um, if you guys wanna click away because I'm done talking about the Mandalorian. If you all want to click away, that's cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about um, the the, uh, the Big Bang Theory now. And uh, I will leave timestamps in the description so that if you want to like skip around to like where I'm talking about the Mandalorian or from where I'm talking about uh, the the um, Big Bang Theory, y'all can. Uh, I'm not gonna judge. Personally, I probably would just watch this if I hadn't seen the Big Bang Theory. I probably would just watch this for the Mandalorian segment. But here you go. Um, so now the Big Bang Theory. Um, so. So basically, the Maj 
so the game theory. I actually thought it was quite funny. Um, I um, I actually really did like it. Um, I know that's sort of, or that's supposed to be insulting to like the, the fan community and like it's not really supposed to be liked by you know, comic book fans and stuff. And it is kind of um, it is sort of giving credence to be to be um fan or to the geek stereotype and stuff. But I think there actually is some really well but I do think that the characters are actually pretty well written despite the over fight in early seasons the overuse of the stereotypes that all these characters fit into. Because after a certain point they just sort of become better written characters and stuff, at least in my opinion. To the point where it doesn't really, their stereotypes kind of don't matter except when they need a joke to be told, or they need to tell a joke, so then their stereotypes matter. But other than that, I don't think they really matter too much later on. Um, so, basically, the premise is that, <coughs> um, let's see, Howard, um, Sheldon, Leonard, and Raj, so basically four sort of geeks, or, um, four, like, physicists slash astronomer slash engineer basically befriend a very attractive actress, um, and they basically, um, befriend her, and they end up all hanging out with her, basically, and then they go on several adventures that lead to basically all of them being married at the end of the show, or at the very least having a bunch of kids. Um, so, basically, um, I mean, I'm not really that offended by the show, um, personally, like, I think it's actually, um, really funny, and, um, I don't know, I just, and, you know, I'm not gonna say that the people who are offended by this show don't have, like, a backbone, because that's stupid, and that would be generalizing, but I think that, um, if you were offended by by the Big Bang Theory, and that's totally, um, you know, you're totally validated by that, but I actually thought it was funny, and, um, because basically all these characters, despite the fact that they all have PhDs, and all are supposed to be really smart and successful in their fields, they're all kind of idiots, and it's not because they're geeks, and it's not because they're, you know, highly respected scientists, but it's because they're actually idiots. And I just have, um, and, you know, um, I've seen friends, and, and initially all the friends are kind of morons. Um, no offense to people who are fans of friends, but initially all the friends are kind of moronic. And then, of course, the later seasons um, happen. And they develop more as characters to the point where they're not idiots. So that's kind of how I sort of view it. And, uh, you know, sure, both the actresses who play Bernadette and Penny now have played Harley Quinn. And I've actually seen the first episode of that Harley Quinn TV show on DC Universe, and it was actually, um, pretty funny. Um, they showed it on, uh, TBS or TNT or something. It was pretty fun. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk about it, obviously, but, it, you know, it was, I thought it was funny. Um, uh, you know, everybody, it was 
acted pretty well, I'd say. Um, but, and of course, the actress who plays Bernadette did a horrible Harley Quinn voice in Batman Harley Quinn. That was just abysmal. So, um, yeah. Um, I have basically some little... So, some of the things I want to talk about with the public limit here on my notes. Because I'm not on my iPad. Oh, um, my favorite character is probably Leonard and then, um, Bernadette. Because Leonard's just, you know, he's the straight man and stuff. And he might be the... And Bernadette is just, like, the queen of burns in this show. Like, she's this, um... Basically, whenever she, like, did a sick burn, and even with Amy, or even, yeah, with Amy, when she did a sick burn, I was like, god damn, they're ruthless. You know, like, this show, and this show had me rolling on the floor uh, many a times because it was just really super, like, funny and hilarious. And I can totally see how it lasted, like, 12 years on CBS. And... You know, that's a testament to the show that I basically watched it from, like, December 26th to yesterday. And, uh, although I did have to play a little bit of Jedi Fallen Order towards the end there and watch a few movies in between discs, I still, um, always wanted to come back, sit down wherever I was watching it last and basically um enjoy the um and just enjoy myself um so yeah if you like basically if you like friends and you like other situational comedies of this kind of sort then big bang theory is definitely for you um you know just give the or really actually don't give the pilot a shot because the pilot's bad um, the pilot's not really that good. Give, um, the episode where they all dress up like the Justice League. It's in the fourth, uh, it's the fourth season, I think it's like, a, it's around episode 11, maybe. Give that a shot. Um, and then if you enjoy that, then, you know, watch, then watch the whole show. Um, um, that's my best advice for y'all. It's basically just watch a very disparate episode, but also a very key um, plot-wise episode, and just see how it goes. Um, so, uh, now what else? Uh, what else am I talking about? Oh, um, uh, I guess I'll go into spoilers now. So... Um, Raj basically finally gets the ability to talk to women, and he's one of the problems that I have with the pilot is that, is that he is underdeveloped when it comes to the pilot, because, you know, his whole joke is that he at first does not talk to women, and that gets very old very fast. Um, and, you know, they do find ways to reinvigorate that initial joke. But that gets old really fast, I'll be honest. And, um, despite the, like, obvious Raj is gay, ha ha ha, humor that I'm sure somebody finds offensive, um, I didn't really enjoy the character of Raj until later on when they tried to give him a little bit more of his own voice and then I think he was pretty good um now Howard um Howard also has that whole um you get it he might be gay and plus um Howard just looks like he's one of the Beatles or like one of the monkeys or something or something weird like that um, it's, it is weird 
Um, but what? Uh, and then there's Bernadette, like I said, who might be my favorite, my favorite um of the female characters besides Amy. But like I think it's mainly more Bernadette. It's like my favorite. Might be more of my favorite of the female characters because you know she's just really funny and stuff. Sorry, I got caught up in the game there. Uh, but yeah, like I think it's just really important that the. Or I think it's really, I don't know. You know, she's a good character, and of course she doesn't at first maybe want to have kids because you know her mom did a babysitting thing, and you know. She doesn't really enjoy um, being around kids because of that, that background of babysitting, but then she ends up um, being a, a really amazing mom, which is good, um, because that's nice. You know, it's sort of the classic um, Monica, or it's the, you know, a character that you maybe wouldn't likely see as a parent, and end up being actually a really good parent. Is really nice and stuff, and then there's Sheldon, and Sheldon's probably, um, and Sheldon's just hilarious, um, he probably has, um, autism or something, or like some form of autism, or some form of a ADHD type of disorder, which sort of with the, which autism sort of falls into, um, but there are like different levels of autism, and he obviously is probably on the spectrum. Just to you know, this is kind of nice, and I'm just sorry if I'm kind of being annoying with this this jumping around thing. I'm I'm literally trying to stall, having to get back into the action, but here you go. But here you go, I actually did quite a bit of damage just jump, just uh, doing that initial jumping around trying to take down four guys initially. But there you go, there you go. Also, I'm playing as Captain UK, or UK Spider Man. Which, um, this is actually a very nice looking suit. Um, given, you know, that, uh, um, Spider-Man in Europe does not mix because whenever somebody goes to Europe and Spider Man thing except far from home, somebody dies. Uh yeah. But yeah, so let's see here. Um now who's next? Oh um Amy, I've already kinda of talked about Amy, but Amy I think is really actually um she goes she's also a weird character. You know, because she has, like, this weird infatuation, this almost, also, once again, almost homosexual infatuation with Penny, but she somehow ends up with, like, Sheldon, and, like, they get, and, you know, sort of like all the characters, once they get past that initial joke and start actually character, giving these characters characterization and character development, and then they move past that initial joke and become or better characters, which is something you can say a lot about this show. It's a lot about, um, look, this is the initial joke of a character. Let's see if we can get past it. And with certain characters, they absolutely do. Um, Barry, I think, is actually a really good example of this. Or Barry and Stur are actually really good examples of this, where <clears throat> it's, um, how do we get that initial joke. Um, you know, and what do we do once we get past that initial joke and actually sort of give character to these characters? Um, I think Sheldon's mom might be, and uh, on the flip side, Sheldon's mom, I think, is the example of, of a character possibly not getting past the initial joke, but it's, but with that, it's kind of okay. And it's, does take a little too long for 
then we get past the initial joke of Raj, but whatever. That is, um, but, you know, it's okay. Um, uh, and then what else? Oh, Will Whedon. So, I've recently kind of gotten, in, I'm still even watching, but I've kind of recently gotten into, like, the TNG era of Star Trek. Because I've seen the TNG movies, obviously, and I've seen all the movies, but, like, I'm really just, um, but, like, I haven't really gotten, so I'm not really super far, I think I'm, I think I, I started the second season, because I'm watching Next, Star Trek Next Generation just off and on, I think I've started the second season, um, like a week ago, so, I'm, and I'm slowly making my way through that show, just, you know, <clears throat> taking my time with it, because, like, um, episode, those episodes are like 40 minutes, or 42 minutes long or something, it's just crazy. <clears throat> but yeah, um, but Will, so this show really does work, or this show really does do a good job at you sort of initially not liking Will Whedon along with Sheldon, but then, um, and of course, you know, he plays the Meemaw card and stuff, but Sheldon, um, of course, uh, plays, um, really helps with, but then, um, Will Whedon makes friends with Sheldon, and you end up liking Will Whedon, and I actually quite like Will Whedon, likes the show, and actually, I never realized it, but apparently Will Whedon, he played, um, like the Tate Cord Blue Beetle, in the um, Batman Brave and the Bold, which is a show I got for Christmas, which was really cool to learn. And then, of course, he's also um, Dark Star, or, you know, um, Dark Morning, Michael Morning Star on um, Ben 10, uh, Alien Force, which is, like, really cool. You know, he's the, he's the pretty boy that James life out of out of, um, uh, I think all characters, but mainly female characters and stuff, and like the first season, or, uh, of Benton, of Benton and Lee Force, so that's, like, really neat, because I didn't realize that, but once I learned that, I was like, oh, yes, of course, I can totally tell that that's him, because, you know, uh, I've recently re started to rewatch um, Ultimate, or, um, Alien Force. And, yes, it totally makes sense, I can really hear it. Um, but, yeah, and also, so, uh, uh, Mark Hamill, like, officiates, like, the Sheldon and Amy wedding, and, like, that entire episode just had me rolling on the floor, because, Mark Camel was hilarious in that episode, and, um, that's gonna be my segue into my favorite episodes. So, my, my first, and this isn't really in any particular order, but, um, my first favorite episode is Eldon, or is Sheldon and Amy's wedding. Um, Mark Hamill is hilarious in that episode. Um, everyone is acting that episode really well, including Mark Hamill. That's probably, um, I'd say that the Amy Sheldon wedding is probably, like, his third, of what I've seen, is probably, like, his third best performance I've ever seen from Mark Hamill. Because he did really good in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City and Batman Beyond Return of Joker, but, like, he was really good in Big Bang Theory. Like, hot dog. Um, he had me roll on the floor. Um, like when he, it's like, like, um, when Amy does her vows and he's like, that was more beautiful than I expected. I'm gonna need a minute that had me dying. Um, like, I love, like, I loved it. And so there you go. That's probably my most favorite, ep that's probably, like, my most favorite episode of the show. And now, um, I'm gonna talk about the, um, episode where, um, where, um, Howard goes up into space because it's literally, 
because um, you know, not only are we waiting the entire episode for the shuttle to launch, but we also are getting the countdown to because because um, he was supposed to get married to Bernadette before he went up to space, but then they they pushed up the but then they pushed up the uh, the mission, I believe, and he had to get married to her like literally I think the day before he went off to space. And um with that he um and with and with that he had to get not only not only get married to her, um, sort of on the spot or uh, earlier than he thought he would. You know, there's also the countdown to the, you know, there's also like the Lenny, Leonard, and Penny arc of that episode. And wait, did I just complete this? Awesome. It's great. Um, but yeah. And it's just really nice and stuff. And it might be my second favorite episode of the show. Is when, um, is when Howard and Bernadette get married. So yeah. Um, just to shut up, um, Yuri for a moment. So my favorite episode of the entire show is probably when, um, is when, uh, Shaney, um, Sheldon named Shaney gets married. And then when Howard and Bernadette, Herney, are they called Herney? I guess, because Howard and, because Bernadette's the name is Bernie. So, Hearn, or, um, Howie Bowie, I don't, I don't know what their, what their, um, couple name is, but, but um, whatever, uh, how am I gonna get into the, okay, wait, there it is, damn it, okay, wait, hold up, right there. Okay, because the last um, house that I that I did this with, I um, a, like a hammerhead guy jumped out. I was a little cautious, cautious about that. But so, how much time? Okay, um, um, I'll wrap it up real fast. My third favorite episode is um, opening night, the episode where they go and see the Force Awakens. Because Will Whedon shows up and he's wearing like a Spock costume and stuff. And the hilarious thing is, is that I think he looks more like, not like Leonard Nimoy Spock, but I think he looks more like Star Trek Discovery Spock, if anything. Which is just kind of funny because Star Trek Discovery, um, because uh, this show happens, um, because um, like that episode aired like, two years, I think, or three years before Star Trek Discovery actually came to be, so, um, there you go, that's fun, and, uh, of course, you know, um, uh, it's <clears throat> Amy's birthday, the movie, uh, Force Awakens premieres on Amy's birthday, <clears throat> and, uh, Sheldon's like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to, <clears throat> I'll, I guess I'm gonna miss Star Wars to have sex with my girlfriend, and that's just hilarious that you know, he almost picks Star Wars over his girlfriend. That's and you know that's just kind of fun. And um, also, one of the things that I love from this show is Sheldon Cooper presents Fun with Flags because Fun with Flags is literally the Dan Richardson show. It's just that I don't have a a whiteboard with the Dan Richardson show on it, and I totally want that. So don't be surprised if someday I end up having a whiteboard and it says, um, Dan Richardson presents the Dan Richardson show. Because, I, I don't know, I, I really do enjoy that. And so basically, um, sort of like with The Mandalorian, I'm going to give, oh yeah, um, the episode titles, like, um, I realized that there's supposed to be sciencey titles, so like you're, <clears throat> and I, I get that, but that's
supposed to be the joke. But these are probably like the worst titles um, I've ever seen. I literally like these. Um, the episode titles have you know scientific names with them, and I'll write the actual official titles of my favorite episodes, I guess, in the description. Um, but like they literally um, are just the weirdest titles and. In my notes, I literally have bow tie for episode 11, or for season 11, episode 24. I literally have on my notes bow tie, season 5, episode 24. Um, I just have countdown, and then, um, episode, and then, um, episode 11 of season 9, I have. Uh, opening night. That's, uh, I didn't even bother writing the full titles, which you could say is just me being lazy, but, um, the family members that, uh, my family members who also enjoy this show completely agree with me about the titles. Like, the titles are just weird. But yeah, so, I think that does, that about does it um considering everything um uh poor characterization at the beginning poor um a poor pilot because the show really doesn't get going until like i think the fifth episode which is about burgers like that's when the show really i think gets gets the ball rolling so despite so um so despite my my character my, my problems with characters and and um uh, with the pilot and with the episode titles I'm, I'm happy to give the Big Bang Theory a eh, why not a two or yeah a two point five out of four. So this has been the Dan Richardson show. <coughs> Um, please, down in the comment section down below, um, tell me what was your favorite part of each perspective, of each, um, show, respectively. Um, do you, you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? If you don't agree with me, that's great. Let's, you know. And if you do agree with me, also great. That, you know, tell me why. Um... So, you know, remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Have a great rest of your day. God bless. Bye.